All right, welcome to the video. Today, me and my friend Nate are training at the Chicago Sports Institute. Today, we're gonna train back for hypertrophy. We're gonna show you lots of tips and tricks as well as a lot of training footage about how to train back hard and effectively. Stay tuned. <laughs> Scoop is 300 weeks of caffeine. Mm. Uh, looks like quite one. a bit. I'll probably do, probably do half stand. -up. Yeah, I do like anywhere from a half to two thirds. For me, normally I do the compound sandwich technique. So I'll start with like a, a main bread and butter movement. Yeah. And then I'll do like an isolation movement afterwards because. It's easier to develop that mind muscle connection for me when I've got like a lot of blood in the muscle and going stuff like that. And then I'll go into another compound movement with at least one degree of freedom that ensures that whatever muscle I'm trying to target most is actually the limiting factor, right? The thing that I always like address in my warm ups is mm -hmm. individually what your lack of movement qualities are. So my ability to anteriorly tip and protract my right scapula is worse than my right. So in between like my warm up sets and stuff, one thing I'll do is I'll just actively stretch that area. So I sh I'm leaning that shoulder forward and mm -hmm. actively trying to increase are that you range. Rotating it? Yep, so like I'm kind of dumping that shoulder forward a little bit. Okay. Letting that shoulder come or shoulder blade come around and almost over the rib cage. It's one it's 140. 140. All right, no problem. It's almost halfway to our work. So what do you want to go for? Like sets of what? I'm gonna go for like a set of eight to nine or so. Okay. I'm not, I'm gonna probably do the stack. So I'll probably do like four. Because I don't do full set warm-ups. Okay. Oh, this is light. There's a benefit with this attachment compared to regular mag that I really like. I can get like. my fingers farther across it, yeah. like farther over it. Mag takes up like my whole hand. There's that. <laughs> oh yeah, hell yeah. External rotation. Yeah. So just slightly better line of pull on the lats compared to the terries. Okay. So you're gonna be slightly stronger compared to where you're more neutral. Just puts that slight difference can make such a big difference in terms of the musculature you're targeting. What's the heaviest you've gone on lap pull downs? I think the heaviest I do back at Madtown is probably, let's see, they do like half, so you see like 70, 60, 80, 90, but you gotta double it. So probably I never usually go above 160. But I never use a grip like this. I'm always a wide grip there, guy. That is a very biomechanically advantageous yeah. grip. So you may surprise yourself. You may be able to do the stack. Let's see it. That's 210. Oh yeah. thinking about here actively like keeping my trunk stiff as I drop as I keep elbows in front kind of helps me so I'm thinking about pulling I don't want to think about pulling my wrist to my shoulder I want to think about like pulling my elbow to my legs as I drive down and in front uh -huh. using kind of like this arcing motion here yeah. right so you want that bar well, bias the last more yeah naturally it's gonna keep the bar in front of you rather than like straight overhead because then that's gonna mimic more of a pull-up motion which is gonna get a lot more bicep involved. So that's one thing we'd be thinking. Even though this is probably gonna get sloppy, I probably think, shit, it'd be nice to get like six, six clean-ish. We'll see in the we'll video. See. I'll, I'll we'll do see. A, a review and kind of see how how it is. I think I'm gonna use my deadlift song on this one. Get hyped, we're up in the stack today, come on. I, I save all my energy for the set. That's another oh, thing, yeah. I don't get like super screaming because I save it all for the set. Nah, I, I have to build up to it to some degree. The song I play for my top set lately just gets me a whole different song. Let's see it. That's lap pull down, three sets done. Did a big extensive warm up, build that mind muscle connection, get our nervous system primed and ready. Now we're gonna move on to our horizontal dominant movement. 
what is this called? Like a hammer strength row? Plate loaded row. Plate loaded row. Go more here, you'll get a little more teres and thoracic, so upper lat. Right, so you're talking like right here, right? Yep. Okay. And then the this. The pronated grip is more like and still point. upper. This is still upper back because it's still retraction focused, but this yeah. will make it even more retraction focused. This is, like, this is more rhomboid. More rhomboid and trap, trap in general. Gotcha. And this is more like. Essentially under, taking the lats and teres. So this is like back. middle of back, this is like armpit region, kind of. Yeah. All right, Team Versa over here. Come on. Comment down below. I should put a poll on my story. Team Versa or Team Strap? You're totally gonna lose. At least you know you're outnumbered, right? <laughs> you're Mr. Classic. The only, the only thing that these are at $80 That's, and cotton straps are no. like 15. Using Versa grips is like competing in men's physique. It's just, it's the modern pussy shit. And it's, oh. not, it's not old school like classic. Oh. <laughs> All right, well, we'll meet you in the posing room then. All right. <laughs> Call it a quarter, even though it's half a plate. What? I've always wondered why people call it a quarter, even though it's half a plate. Right? It's 25. Yeah, it's a quarter of a hundred, but a plate's not a hundred. Yeah, but it's still. It's a quarter of a hundred, so you're, you're comparing it to money. Yes. Whereas the currency you should be comparing it to is 45s or $1 bills. All right, this is the Liberty coin. So that's like a 50 cent Kennedy piece right there. A half, two and a half plates. Instead of pulling from hand to shoulder, because that's mostly bicep, right? If I was able to turn off my lat, I could still complete this movement because I'm using just my arm. So I want to think about maximally contracting, see how close I can get these points by pulling my elbow down. Now, obviously, the machine is only going to allow me to work in one range of motion. I'm not going to be able to go against the arc of the machine. But actively fighting against that is going to help you get an even harder contraction. At least that's the cues that I use in my brain, so try that in your own back workouts, but we're gonna go for two and a half here. Let's go. That's something I actually want to talk about is, especially with training back, is using expansion of the rib cage to your benefit. So on the stretch of any back movement, you want to ideally take an inhale, really expand through that abdomen, and when that arm is on the front, posterior expansion, expansion through the back of that rib cage. So your lats here, they attach at these ribs, so it's gonna put the lats on greater stretch but also that expansion through here is gonna allow you to protract those shoulders more, again, more accentuated trap stretch. Too. So are you telling people to take big breaths of air before uh, they do their reps? On the stretch. They wanna like, so when they're down, so, so when they're, tell them what they should do. So when they're at the bottom of a range of motion. Yep, up. exactly. Okay. You wanna feel your rib cage physically expand so, on that stretch. So you wanna breathe on the way before going up and then breathe out before yep, going so down. Here, I'll, I'll demonstrate it right here. Because yeah, you gotta know when to take your breath, right? Because don't you also want a big rib cage on the way down so you can get a nice deep stretch? Right? That's exactly why you want to expand through here. Yep. And then depending on well, the we'll context. See when you breathe. We'll see when you breathe yeah. on these reps, because I think that's an important part. Because basically it sounds like you're saying, just keep a big rib cage the whole time, don't breathe, right? No, <laughs> you should. No, definitely breathe. <laughs> um, because <laughs> breathing is not. Exhaling is just is important, otherwise you're not gonna be able to extend that upper back, and you need thoracic extension in order to fully retract the shoulder blades okay. and everything too. So. Let's see it. <sighs> Expand here. <sighs> okay, so we're talking about. Exhale and extend. 
So when you reach the top, that's when you want to breathe out. What you just did earlier was yeah. a fu like that was fine for lats, but the way you can do that even better yeah. is just using your actual rib cage as a fulcrum. So like that's one of the best ways to actually like get the best output possible with the lats. So fulcrum, you mean like pivot point? So you did a good job of wrapping that arm around the body because that's what I always think of it like I want to get these two points as far away from each other as I can. Well, it depends on like what division we're prioritize prioritizing, but in this case. We have a ton of lat fibers that attach at the spine. Yeah. So a lot of these initially run horizontal, then they start to run more vert vertical. So Same the more we wrap, wrap that around here. Yep. So the more we wrap around that body, so you want to be closer to midline. Yeah. So. Okay. Wait. So let me show you really quick. Keep that arm close to the rib cage. Okay. While you're doing this, you'll notice a huge output difference because when you stack all those joints, I think the spine has like, I'm trying to think, seven, five. Like 20 something joint, 20 something individual joints when you stack all those together. So you're keep going that arm close to the rib cage. Like this. See how, but I'm still letting that arm wrap around the body here. Okay. So you're keeping like a. Still inhale on the stretch here. It's gonna put those lats on great stretch and then exhale. So the contraction is when you exhale. Yes. Yes. Okay. But, so a secondary function of the lats is lateral flexion. But. So you wanna crunch down? No, you don't. And the oh. reason being is because. We lose the rib cage as its fulcrum then. So the so rib cage takes priority. You wanna, yes. So you want to fight that. So you know you're going too heavy when you start fatiguing and you're having to go like that as okay. opposed to you failing like Being able to keep it perfectly that. upright. Exactly. Gotcha. Just for everybody watching, I'm going to try to give you an explanation, like a breakdown in my head of what he just said as like a demo for what you can go in the gym and do, right? Because I'm going to try to be the... The, the link, right? You're the science brain and I'm the practical meathead, right? Yeah. So like, what can people go in the gym and actually do? First so you of do all, the stack. Let's way see. too much weight. <laughs> hey man, the last like two years, I can really leave it at the door. Like, I don't need to use a lot of weight. Like, using a lot of weight's cool. No, but that's the thing though. You want to use a lot of weight. You should be able to do a lot of weight with this. Just let me warm up, man. Your lats are the biggest upper body muscle. No. Keep that arm close to the rib cage. So just knee down. Yep. Okay. So I want to be... That, that portion of it doesn't matter. Just think stack and everything. Stack, stack. So, I want to breathe in at the top. Yep. Okay. Expand okay, it. so breathe in, expand the rib cage, exhale, crunch down. Yep. Okay. Don't, but don't crunch to the side. There, that's really good. Hell yeah. I'm saying, you could probably do a whole lot more. Yeah, I mean, I probably could do a lot more. But again, I feel like that extra 20 pounds is gonna make less of a difference if it has bad technique. So yeah. But you should be able to do a lot more with good technique. Just as your body acclimates to it too. <sighs> okay, so after that set, I mentioned how I felt the serratus anterior. Oh, it's cramping. Yeah. It's Which is that bear up. claw muscle right here that goes like this on the top of your ab core. So why is that useful? So it should be cramping because your lats attach to that inferior angle. So the way we put it on greater stretch is it actually aids slightly in retraction. So really? our serratus will push that scap forward and put the lats on even greater stretch here. So actually when, oh, okay. I, when, I, I have, when I have people effectively stretch their lats, the final portion I tell them to do is turn on your serratus, push that scap forward and you'll feel an even bigger stretch there. That makes a lot of sense. Cause I remember when I like tore mine, strained mine. I couldn't do anything back related and it felt yeah. like when I breathed out, I'd have like a stabbing pain, like a screwdriver yep. shoved right here. So that makes a lot of sense So there. I can show you a so, really good like passive stretch for the last little ball out here. And then a good exercise to do for that is like those cat backs where you put your hands on the ground and you push all the way through and you can just annihilate that muscle and really yep. learn how to turn it on. Yep. Cause yeah, and that comes from bringing the hand closer to midline, right? Precisely. So here, hold on, I'll show you. We'll start. One thing I want you to do is just push those hips a little more forward. So your hips should almost stay tucked and stay stacked on that rib cage, like I said. So here, go to the, come to the other side here. So that's, what is that called? Posterior pelvic tilt? I wouldn't cue that specifically, but just think, stacking everything. Stack that pelvis with the rib cage. That's gonna stack the spine properly. <laughs> Oh, the whole stack, fuck.
fucking 200 pounds. God oh my damn, gosh. That hurt. Oh, we just learned how to build your back, and now we're gonna talk about how to actually display it. Here's again, it's all an illusion, which is why like I can look crazy on Instagram, and I kind of look like a whale right here. So, <laughs> focusing on from the front, right? So I'm gonna stand like over there. You can do a lot of fancy stuff if you got, unless you got like Olympia level legs. Keep them close, okay? The farther apart you get, the stringier you look. So I'd say about six to eight inches. You can spike one leg if you want. But you want the key is is you want to be able to uh, rectus femoris, right? Is that what this middle part is? Yeah. You want to be able to get that. And how you do that is you bend over, shorten it, and then crank it up over the top. So you're like anterior t tilting your pelvis. Yeah. In order to keep that shortened, right? So you start from the bottom. That actually looks pretty crazy. <laughs> so good to me. That that looked very filled out, like yeah. <laughs> considering how deep you are in the off season. Again, posing those legs, keeping it over, then cranking up. So you wanna start with a strong base, always setting your feet and working up. Now when you're on stage, you're gonna to have to do this in like multiple seconds, otherwise the judges are gonna be on you. And then when it comes to the upper body part, I always think about pushing forward and down. You're gonna to have to work, see what structure works best with you, but like when I'm hitting the front double, I always come up, kind of pull my shoulder blades forward, and then keep the hands nice and close to the head, and then work up a little bit, and then Expand that rib cage, and then you'll see that sweep down. You can add your own little flair to it again. You can get that leg a little bit out to the side. You can hit the X. All right, let's see if you can apply that now, okay? Uh, feet flat? Yeah, okay. you wanna think about using your heel and your toes to do this with the floor, right? Okay. All right, hit that X. On the menu, two scoops whey. We're gonna rock with one scoop carb powder. Quite possibly the quickest digesting post-workout meal because we're gonna be eating later in the day, so don't wanna bog myself down with some big, heavy meal. Also, this is super, super quick, so if you can afford supplements like this, definitely a great option if you're on the go, on the run, doing stuff all day, and you gotta fit your workout in.